Hey everyone, welcome back to Steven Inks. It's getting close to summer. So what are your summer plans? Don't tell me right now, I can't hear you, but I'll tell you what my summer plans are. I'm taking a break from my rules, from all the things that make me a little bit uptight, and I'm gonna kick back and have some fun. And one of the things I'm gonna relax is my rule that um, I don't buy so-called knockoff pens. So um, I'm gonna go shopping on the internet right now and I want you to join me. What I'm gonna be looking for as I go through this website is I'm just gonna be looking for blatant uh, rip-offs and um, knockoff versions of pens that either I own or am interested in owning. Um, and we're just gonna see how they compare to the original or um, how blatant the knockoff is. So um, we're gonna get going on this. I'm starting with Fountain Pen. I'm just gonna search that. Whoops, uh, Fountain Pen is gonna be what I'm gonna search right now and um, see what comes up. And anything, again, we're looking for stuff that really looks like something that already exists. So now, all right, here's one that, yeah, that they've, uh, that's, that's kind of been, talked about by a lot of pen reviewers right now. And I don't actually own this. It's clearly a ripoff of the Pilot Vanishing Point, the Mahjong A1. Um, gonna add that to my cart. Great, there's my cart. You know, there are a few pens here that look pretty unique and cool that I kind of would be interested in to try um, that if I wasn't going for just complete absolute knockoff pens. Uh, yeah, here's one. This is the Lambi 2, basically a ripoff of the Platinum Curidas. It looks like they only have two colors left. They have this pink one and this brown one that looks like a giant finger. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty ugly. Um, uh, but let's get one. Oh, okay. This is weird. Uh, this pen looks like. I can't figure out if it's um, if it's aluminum or plastic that just looks kind of metal, but it's like it's like a yeah, that, that looks definitely plastic. It's like a a Lamy Safari, but it's a brush pen. That's insanity, and I will take one. Yeah, there's definitely some interesting designs here. Some stuff that I would come back and look at. It's not ripoff style. It's just an, something I've never seen before. Okay, here we go. Uh huh. So the Lambi 2 has made a version of a clear appropriation of the Twisby Eco, which is one of my favorite pens. So I got to do this. What color shall we get? There's a pink one, a green one. I kind of like that blue one, red one, a white one, a clear one, a sort of a cream colored one. I kind of like that. Hmm. I'm going to go with this cream colored one and I'm going to do the EF and let's add that. Okay. Here is another version of the uh, brass Caveco Sport. I don't have one of those, but I kind of want one. All right, finish is, let's go for a, what's that? I don't know what that is. It's just a word in Chinese. Let's be surprised. You know, it's interesting looking at some of these designs. I thought it would be very flagrant what the ripoff was and what the um, what the genuinely innovative idea was. And obviously some of these things, like you see the design of the Lamy Safari over and over again. Um, and uh, the Parker 51 is another one that you just see it over and over again. Mm, but some of these are really subtle and you wonder if it stands on its own. So it's an interesting thing, not as cut and dry as I thought it would be. Okay, 
And here's a clear ripoff of the, uh, I believe it's a Mont Blanc pen. It's the, um, the Little Prince. Yeah, it says MB Mont, like they're trying to trick you with these names. <laughs> it's interesting. Let's give it a shot. All right. Um, I think that does it. So it'll take probably a month for these to show up. We'll have a look at them, and then we're going to go over them uh, piece by piece over a series this summer. And um, yeah, let's check it out. While we're waiting for our pens to arrive, I am going to do a little drawing for you guys and talk about all the feelings I have about this subject of knockoff pens using my Jinhao 51A. Although um, I feel like this is a gray area, um, which I'll go into more uh, information about during the video. This is the closest thing to a knockoff pen that I own. Uh, I filled it with uh, Diamine Sherwood Green. While that ink itself is not a knockoff, it does rely upon someone else's intellectual property, which is the spirit of the thing. Um, and we'll talk more about other things like that. And I am going to be using Etcher Labs Premium Watercolor Postcards, if you are familiar, with the comment thread from the Etcher Labs Premium uh, fountain pen set that I reviewed a few months back. You might think that I'm using this on purpose, um, which is fine if you wanna think that because um, I think it's funny and I'm still kinda mad at them. But um, go watch that video if you wanna know what I'm talking about. Uh, these postcards mean also though that I can do a bunch of little drawings and uh, I have postcards that I can send out to you all and hope you're all having a happy summer. Um, I'll do as many postcards as I need for uh, how much stuff I have to say and I have to say quite a lot. So let's get into it. All right, so as you see these drawings, uh, what I decided to do was to um, make a series of drawings and my concept was pens that are up to no good or uh, shady pens, shifty pens. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. It's a silly concept. Um, and hopefully we can be a little bit lighthearted about this subject matter. I don't want it to turn into um, something that gets people super angry or um, anything like that because I'm about to express some opinions and they're just opinions. My opinion's just as valid as yours. If you've got a different opinion from me, go ahead and sound off in the comments. I'd love to hear you from you and uh, have that dialogue. But um, so, in general, when it comes to knockoff pens, my uh, opinion tends to be avoid them, uh, which is kind of why, um, you know, in the past I haven't purchased pens like this, but I was genuinely curious. But also, I wanted to address some of the gray areas when it comes to um, copying or, um, you know, sort of knockoff pens. Uh, because there there are some other things that I think besides that main opinion that in general I don't buy knockoff pens um, and I thought it, this would be a great uh, time and place to talk about that um, the first thought that I had is well what counts as a knockoff what counts as copying um, to explain kind of uh, where there's confusion uh, I wanted to talk about music a little bit. Um, I was reading an article about um, musicians who have been accused of plagiarizing songs. Uh, in particular, there was one that I thought was kind of a sweet story uh, about the band One Direction. Um, I don't remember the name of the song because I was too old to listen to them when they were popular. Um, but uh, they were accused of plagiarizing a song by The Who. We, uh, I don't remember the name of that song either because I was too um, not born yet to listen to them when that song came out. Um, but uh, Pete Townsend, who plays guitar for The Who, I believe, um, went on record as saying, hey, leave those kids alone. Uh, there's nobody who owns that chord progression. It's the same three chords we've always been using. And it's just kind of this idea of, yeah, it's like it's 12 bar blues. Um, it's a pattern that's existed for a very long time. Um, he was aware that he didn't invent it, and so um, he wasn't going to claim or pursue any legal action because one song sounded similar to another song. And I, I think that's something that we as pen lovers should probably have as far as an opinion about um, 
about knockoff uh, ideas. There certainly are some pens that cross the line, and I try to find pens that I think do cross the line to really get deep into it. it. But actually, you even notice while I was shopping around, I didn't find as many blatant knockoffs as I thought I would. And in fact, there were a lot of things that have a little twist on uh, what already exists. So when it comes to how does this story about music that I just said apply to, uh, to pens and to so-called knockoff or fake pens, um, really, I mean, when you think about it, there are a limited number of things that make a pen useful as a pen. It has to have a long barrel. The barrel needs to go past uh, the end of where it rests on your hand, otherwise it's uncomfortable. And so either the cap needs to do that by posting or the barrel needs to be long enough. Um, a good shape for a pen is either um, round or at least six facets. Uh, square pens, unless they're rounded squares, are gonna be uncomfortable. You're not gonna have spikes coming out of the middle of the body. You're not gonna have it dip in at a weird place or be too narrow for your fingers to comfortably hold it. There's um, a limited range of what feels good as a pen. So we're not gonna ask pen manufacturers to be unique for the sake of uniqueness. If something works, um, there will probably be a lot of things like it. And the other thing that I keep coming back to when I'm thinking about this is we let a lot of companies off the hook for having very similar designs. But then there's uh, certain companies, usually um, Chinese manufacturers, where uh, we kind of call them cheap, fake, knockoff pens. Um, I wonder if there's a little bit of a, an unfairness um, there, but we can talk about that later. Um, the thing that I really wanted to, to kind of talk about is like, what about these other companies who have such similar designs? I mean, you look at uh, a Sailor 1911, the body design, the nib is slightly different, compare it to a Platinum 3776 or a Mont Blanc Meisterstick 149, I mean, you tell me what the difference is. Uh, they're very similar looking pens and the only difference you can see really is the branding and if you're maybe someone who really knows and cares a lot about fountain pens, you might, um, you might see some subtle differences. So um, the question is, if we like that shape, should we, kind of be pen design gatekeepers and only allow one brand to hold on to a certain shape um, because uh, a brand like say uh, Twisby makes the Eco that has six faceted facets on its cap. Is that the only pen that can ever have six facets on its cap? I don't know. Um, and uh, speaking of Twisby, there's that kind of um, recent controversy. Uh, the, the YouTube channel, um, Pens and T, as well as um, Doug Rathburn from uh, Inquiring Minds, did some really great takes on this. So my my opinion is going to be really short. Um, if we the if you're not familiar with the controversy, um, Twisby recently put out a message that they're not going to be um, renewing uh, their distribution licenses to any of the um, pen distributors or storefronts that carry. Uh, brands that they feel have knocked off or taken advantage of their um, their intellectual property, basically the piston on their piston filling pens, um, and they have this kind of comment about the the tolerances and the measurements of the piston and the width of it. But at the end of the day, um, and my opinion on this will be really quick, just it's twelve bar blues. Twisby doesn't own the idea of a piston. So why are they able to say that someone else who has a piston has knocked them off? I think this is actually dangerous to the fountain pen community because if a company that has power and influence in the market can kind of leverage that power over onto um, uh, other companies, then we miss out on innovations that could come because we have to shut things down if it is too close to something that already exists. So um, for that reason, I just kind of thought it'd be cool to try some knockoff pens, uh, some fake pens, and just see what it's all about. Um, I'm very curious if the 
greater price point of the original pens comes with a quality that's noticeable. Um, and that's another thing too. I, I'm also kind of wondering if the value is inflated for some of these pens if an equivalent can be made for much cheaper. Uh, these are all things that I'm curious about, things that I like to see um, addressed this summer with the videos that I'm going to do. And I'd really love to hear what you think. So again, uh, let me know. Do you agree with me? Uh, do you agree with part of what I said? Um, sound off in the comments below. And uh, I'm very excited about um, this summer and what I'm going to find out. Hey, good news, um, my pens came in, uh, sort of. It's been a long journey, let me explain. So um, two of these pens actually were not ordered from AliExpress. Actually, this one was ordered from AliExpress, but I wasn't able to get it because I ordered it and then a bunch of time passed and they just never shipped it. So I got my money back, but I didn't get the pen. So I went on to wish.com, another cheap place uh, that sells some, some fake pens, uh, and I got this, which was the exact same thing, and something they didn't have on AliExpress was this, which is a, um, an absolute bite, an absolute knockoff on the um, Caveco Sport, the, uh, the one that I used to have, actually, before it was the subject of a used pen salesman video. So I'm just gonna go over and give my quick impressions of these pens that I have. Um, there's actually another one that I ordered that hasn't showed up yet. Um, it's been two and a half months. It might be three months before I get this pen. So goodness, uh, pens not showing up, waiting two months, getting all this mail at random times. I definitely won't be trading um, going through those websites for my pens over Amazon or Goulet pens or any of those other online retailers I've used before um, that give me my stuff a little bit faster. So anyway, that's just food for a thought. So let's see, I have this Majon A1, which um, has a an absolutely lovely action here. It, feels fantastic. I can't wait to play with it in more detail. It's got a nice weight to it. I'm going to say this and it's quite possible that uh, my opinion will not change after I review it, but it just kind of makes me want to get a vanishing point. So I don't know, it's kind of like an advertisement for a pen that is honestly not a, this is not a cheap pen. It is much cheaper than a vanishing point, but it kind of makes me think, I kind of want a vanishing point. Anyway, um, yeah, and this is our uh, our copy of the Twisby Eco. This feels pretty good. It definitely has the branding of this uh, this brand Lambitu that shows up on a couple of these pens here. Um, it feels nice. The nib is obviously not a direct copy of the Twisby Eco, um, but there are definitely some things where you can tell, like the shape. Um, the facets, little red finial on the top. Eh, okay, some some uh, license was taken here. Um, this is also a Lambi two, uh, and it's obviously a a knockoff of the uh, platinum uh, Curidas. It's got a big old button. I heard I learned recently that this is called a knock, and so when you push down the knock, nib comes out. I gotta say this is definitely does not feel as good as the Majan A1. Um, it's a weird, awkward looking little pen. I mean, it's this brown color. It just looks like a turd. Anyway, I think that's gonna be fun to play with. Um, this is clearly a blatant knockoff. We've even got the, um, the Mont Blanc finial right there. I didn't think they would go full on copy, but it even says Mont Blanc Meister stick, which it is definitely not. Um, the edges of this cap are kind of sharp. So I, I hate that. And um, I want to show you something else here. 
this uh, inside this pen, why is the feed set so deep beyond the nib? And it's not out of alignment. I tried to take it out. It doesn't come out. So weird. Um, I absolutely hate that. And uh, I'll get into more detail about that later. But oof, I am not happy with the quality of that. Um, this one looks okay. It's interesting. It's a snap cap, which is um, not... Uh, what the Kaveco Sport is. So it took me a while to get used to. I keep wanting to unscrew it. And um, yeah, it looks uh, it looks decent. I think that I, I, I might enjoy this one. Um, depends. We'll see. We'll see. Comes with a little um, converter. This converter is super weird. Uh, I don't think I've seen one like this before. So I don't know who makes this pen. It's not branded anywhere. It's just a pen. So maybe they're afraid of getting sued. They don't want anyone to know who makes this pen. That's clearly a knockoff of the Kaveco Sport. Anyway, uh, but uh, Lambitu, once again, super proud of stealing ideas from other pen companies. They've got uh, this, which is supposed to be a brass pen. I'm feeling this and I'm going to say maybe steel, um, probably aluminum. It's way too light to be brass. Uh, so that sucks. Uh, this is uh, definitely a disappointment. It feels like it's painted coated plastic. So this texture is super unnatural looking. Um, here's the pen. I have never seen a feed without little uh, ridges on the back. And I'm not sure what that means. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, it looks like a pretty stock standard metal pen. This looks like a Lamy converter in there. I know it's not, but it really looks like one, probably just because of the red. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what this all looks like. So really quick, just before we end here, uh, I am going to quickly put these in order from what I'm most excited to see to what I'm least excited to look into, which pens I think I'm going to hate. Um, so definitely here, this is most excited over here. Um, this is weird and ugly, but I think that makes me excited to look into it and see what it's all about. I kind of think this funky, fugly little pen will be fun to play with. Um, yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting. I do not think I will like either of these two pens. They are, two, in my mind, two of the more blatant um, knockoffs. And also, they have design flaws that I'm going to get into into more detail later. Um, so this is my summer. All right, and we're back. The cool thing about this summer is I get to start it off with sending some postcards. So those postcards that um, I made during the drawing section of the video, I'm going to be sending out to somebody in the comment section below. So all you have to do is be a subscriber to my channel, comment below on some plans you have for the summer, and um, I will be choosing one at random within 48 hours of the posting of this video, and then I get to send them off to you. Uh, looking forward to that, looking forward to this summer of reviewing these pens. Some of them I'm probably going to love and some of them I am probably going to hate. So look out for all the emotions, the conflict, the drama of this fake pen summer. I can't wait to share it with you. Uh, don't forget to... Um, to like and subscribe, leave a comment down, down below for the giveaway and continue to take care of yourself. And uh, I hope I will see you in the next video.